Hello, we are going to talk about the theory of thermodynamics, a really good foundation of where to start. Uh, now the emphasis on this is going to be heat. It's really the first law of thermodynamics. So let's look at it. Thermodynamics is the study of energy and energy is so important. Every aspect of life uh, uses energy and you can even look at the world, politics. Energy is fraught. It's just throughout all of, of our life. So huge field. Now, the first law of thermodynamics, it says energy cannot be created or destroyed. There's nothing that I can do to make energy out of nothing and nothing that I can do to take energy and obliterate it and make it into nothing. Impossible. What we do is transfer energy. Energy is transferred. Now, talking about energy, first law, here we have delta U equals Q plus W. Delta U is a way of saying change of energy. You could put a delta E there as well. Uh, we typically use a U. So change of energy equals Q is heat and W is work. Now Q is synonymous, it's related to delta H. And the name for delta H is enthalpy. What's different about these two are the units and it's a subtle difference. So this right here, enthalpy. Uh, Q is in kilojoules. Whereas delta H, enthalpy, is kilojoules per mole, it's a ratio. So when we find Q, we're finding in a very specific situation, what is the energy that's been transferred? What's the energy that's been absorbed or released? Whereas with delta H, we're saying for every mole of substance, this is how much energy is absorbed or released. Think about sugar. I can have five grams of sucrose and figure out how much energy is released when five grams of sucrose is combusted. That would be my Q, kilojoules that would be released when we combust sucrose. Delta H is going to be for every one mole of sucrose, how much energy is released when it's combusted. So this right here is a ratio. Um, and you'll come to see the significance of this down the road, that's a state function. Okay, um, continuing on, two types of energy. We have kinetic energy, energy, that um, is related to motion. So as I'm moving that motion, I have a kinetic energy. Uh, next is potential energy. Potential energy is an energy of position. So if I take this um, marker right here, it has a potential from its height down to the floor total. If I move it down, there's a lower potential energy because the position is closer to the floor. Um, now, where we see this in chemistry, kinetic energy is going to be in the motion and vibration of the atoms. So it's actually atoms moving, either moving, translating within space, or vibrating in their um, one position, in their one spot. Now, uh, potential energy, this is going to be chemical bonds. There's a potential inside those chemical bonds. So we can't create or destroy energy, we only transfer it. Energy always spontaneously moves from a high to a low. If I put an ice cube on my hand, obviously the ice cube is colder, it has less energy than my hand. So the energy from my hand, that warmth, high, is going to move into the ice cube, the low. And naturally, that's always what energy does. It goes from the high and the energy transfers down to the low. Now, at the microscopic level, Energy is transferred, kinetic energy is transferred when atoms collide. So they hit each other and energy from one atom moves into another atom. Um, so the energy from my hand is going to be the collisions of the atoms from my hand hitting the ice. Um, and that's where energy is going to happen. So at the microscopic level, collisions between atoms, that's how energy is transferred. At the macroscopic level where we see this is temperature change. Now temperature um, shows us the direction that the energy is moving. So if the temperature is going down, that means the energy is being released to the surrounding. If the temperature is going up, it means that system is absorbing energy and so the temperature goes up. So it shows us direction, which way is the energy moving? Um, now temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy. You'll see in the video for the uh, Maxwell-Boltzmann um, that atoms will have different energies at different moments. And when we read temperature, it's the average kinetic energy of all of those atoms. Um, there's a direct relationship between kinetic energy and temperature. As you increase the temperature, you increase the uh, kinetic energy, and vice versa, since it's directly related. This is super interesting. 
At absolute zero, there's no motion. There's going to be no kinetic energy. And just a reminder, absolute zero is zero Kelvin or negative 273 Celsius. Okay, a term that you'll want to know, thermal equilibrium. This is when you have two substances, different energies, so different temperatures. They come together and they will meet somewhere in the middle of um, the two temperatures. They'll meet somewhere in the middle. Um, here's a really good example. Let's say that I have a cup of cold water and a cup of hot water. I pour the hot water into the cold water. You know what happens. The cold water warms up, the hot water co cools down, and that mixture comes to one final temperature. Maybe I start with 50 grams at 10 degrees C, and I start with um, 50 grams at, let's say, 40 degrees C. Mix this together. As they come to that middle temperature, it would be 25 degrees C. Uh, so here's a graph that sometimes you'll see for thermal equilibrium. You'll take one substance. This would be my cold water at 10 degrees C. Pour the hot water in. It warms up, and then it levels off. Now, this environment will eventually act on that, and it will begin to cool down. But it will reach a thermal equilibrium from the high and the low mixing coming together, energy being transferred. Now, energy changes. There are three ways that we can change energy. It's by heating, cooling a substance. So this is one cup of water that we have it, um, we heat it up and we cool it down. Okay, so one substance that you heat and cool. Second, phase changes. So going from solid, liquid to gas and back, that would be um, an example of energy changes. And then of course, chemical reactions. Those are energy changes. So two important words here, system and surroundings. We define what we study. We define the system. For example, if I go back to the ice cube, I've got this ice cube in my hand. The system would be the ice cube. Um, so you define the system, and then the surrounding by default is the rest of the universe. If I could use my Morgan Freeman voice, which I don't have, say it's everything else, the rest of the universe. Um, so defining that system, we're asking which way is energy being transferred? Is it going in or is it going out? And we have two words that we can couple to this. When energy is absorbed, when it's taken in, we call that endothermic. And a way to remember this is that E-N, endothermic, you can think of E-N, enter. Um, now if the energy is released and it goes out to the surrounding, that would be exothermic, so releasing of energy. And again, look at the first two letters, uh, this prefix, the EXX, -X, and over here, exit. So exothermic, the energy exits. So let's look at that ice cube again and attach these words. I'm going to define the system as the ice cube. And honest, this is what I do. I pretend that I'm the system. There's something in my head that makes it easier if I become the system. So the ice cube, I'm defining the system as ice cube. I'm thinking, okay, I'm the ice cube. If I'm the ice cube, what happens to my energy? Well, I have to warm up. The way that ice cube warms up, the way I warm up is I have to absorb energy to get warmer and change phase to a liquid. Um, so if I'm taking in energy, that means it's endothermic. The ice cube is absorbing energy. I'm absorbing energy. Um, now, everything else, the surrounding. The surrounding is exothermic um, because it's releasing its energy. So here's the energy in the, in the environment. Here's the energy in my hand. It releases and it goes into that ice cube. Let me give you a couple more examples of exothermic and endothermic. Um, let's say that you put sodium hydroxide solution and hydrochloric acid. You mix that together and it releases energy. It actually gets hotter. It gets hotter. Um, and so you have your temperature probe, you mix it, and it gets warmer. What happened? Okay, so we're going to say that the solution, when it mixed together, it got warmer. That means it absorbed energy. So the reaction um, itself gave off energy for the solution to get warmer. So atoms rearranged, they released the energy and the solution itself absorbed the energy to get warmer. So you're always thinking, where's the energy moving? Where's it coming from? Where's it going to? So that reaction, man, it released energy and the solution where the temperature probe actually is, it got warmer. So we'd say the reaction there is exothermic, but the solution, that was the endothermic. 
you're really, really thinking, um, again, where's energy transferring from and to. Now, this is one that tricks students. Um, and usually, just so you know, we will, um, you'll be asked, is the reaction exothermic or endothermic? I say, oh, the temperature went up, so it was an exothermic reaction. The uh, reaction released energy and the, all the energy went into the solution to warm it up. Um, here's another one that students struggle with, endothermic. Let's say you have water and you put a salt in it and the temperature goes down. Okay, that means the solution lost energy. The solution um, gave away its energy because the temperature went down. Where did it go? It had to go into the chemical reaction, the atoms rearranging. So for, in order for those atoms to rearrange, they absorbed energy, endothermic, which may, and it took the energy from the solution, so it made the solution's temperature go down. So again, where was energy moving to and from? The energy went from the solution because it got colder. It released energy and it went into the reaction, and the reaction used that energy to move atoms. So that reaction is endothermic, and the solution was exothermic. Um, so you're just thinking, where does, where does the energy transfer from? Now, um, I did want to come back here. Everything that I've been talking about so far, it's all been Q. It's all heat. Very little do we do with work. But in reality, no. Often, when energy transfers, it does both the work and the heat. Um, here's an example for you. Um, a car. So the chemical reaction is gasoline is combusted right there. So we have an energy change. We're transferring energy. It goes two places. Number one, it makes the pistons move up and down. So it propels the car. So there's our work. It moves the car. Um, but then the rest of the energy is released as heat. And that's why the engine gets so hot. Um, in this class, no, your focus is heat. Uh, really, the only time that you're going to see work in this class is when we change pressure um, that's going to impact volume. Uh, and that's like a piston. If I decrease the volume, it's going to increase the pressure. That's really the only place in a first year chemistry class that you'll see work. You see work in mechanics and electromagnetism, but in a first year general chemistry, <clears throat> your focus is right here. We really just talk about energy being transferred as heat. Just remember in real life, energy transfer goes in both work and heat. We just won't spend a lot of time on work. So there's a really good foundation for the theory of thermodynamics focused on the first law of thermodynamics. Good work.